I'm a preacher's kid from Kansas City. I'm poor by comparison, but rich to those who know me. I'm about as easy to follow as metaphors are to complex quadratic equations. I'm deep, odd, and eccentric, but powerful and explosive on the world stage. As of October 13th, 2023, the world's population is estimated to be an 8 billion person entity. This means that there are 8 billion individuals on Earth each with their own unique story, experiences, and perspectives. I believe that everyone has the potential to create and inspire and achieve great things. I want to use my work to show people that they are capable of anything they set their minds to. I was raised on the stories of the Bible and the teachings of Jesus Christ. But I'm also a pilot soaring high above the cloud, feeling the wind in my hair and the freedom of the open sky. I'm a mystery to myself and to everyone who knows me. I'm an analytical man, always searching for meaning and answers, trying hard to understand the deeper meaning of the hows and whys and when. I have a place that I have named Sanctuary, 7,000 feet above sea level, where I've made myself a pariah in the list of recluse writers who disappeared into the mountains and created their best work. I am the mountain. And the mountain is me. I am only one, humble and simple and pure. Like a mountain, everything about me can be seen naked in the safety of the mountain. So it gets very cold in the winters. Why? So below freezing, not a soul can bear it. So then, heading off to California like a flock of migrating birds, bald eagles. But bald eagle migration is partial. After the winter thaw, we perch high in the mountains, where my neighbors, the eagles and I, share the mountains with the bears and cougars. Cougars as large as grown men, and giant-sized moose that look like hovercraft when they glide along the mountain toe. Coyotes sing together in chorus to the full moon and myself. But of course, you see there in my perch, I am the only prophetic sentient being. The wildlife think nothing of tomorrow, but where to dig, or when to go out for food, how to survive another night or day. I to an inkling of what is to come and what is to be, and I no longer doubt if there is a God, for my experience shakes the foundation of with evidence needed for me to preach. I'm preaching to the preachers now. I'm inspired, even compelled, my neighbor, the badger, fighting the eagles and vultures to keep them from swooping down to pluck up her baby badgers. Up in their razor-sharp, dagger-like claws, there are rabbits of many kinds, long-haired, red-tailed, red-tailed fox, deer, elk. The list goes on and on. At some point, it reaches the dinosaurs in the misty peaks of Moldova. I and two literary giants found inspiration and solitude. Alexander Pushkin, the Russian bard, and Mihai Amanescu, Romanian's national poet. Today, a war rages in the Carpathian Mountains, where I signed the guest book of Mihai Amanescu in 1990. When I was there between 1990 and 2005, a volunteer tourist, a civil diplomat I was. I also sang in the Opera House in Bucharest for 10 years. I had a record deal at Electric Chord Records as well. And like kindred spirits, Pushkin and Emanescu and I have all found our voices in the embrace of nature. 1817 to 1862 were the years in the life of Henry David Thoreau, an American essayist, poet, and philosopher. He's best known for his book Walden, which chronicles his experiment in simple living in a cabin he built near Walden Pond in Massachusetts. Much like me, off-grid living in Utah in the mountains with the water. Nothing but solar power, Starlink internet, water brought up from the fresh mountain creek. This retreat into nature allowed him to explore transcendentalist ideas and reflect on the relationship between humans and the natural world. I also think of him as a sort of a prophet. Well, this is pretty much me, sort of a prophet. Except in 1846 to 1848, Henry Thoreau 
lived during the Mexican-American War, when California and large parts of the southern western lands of the United States were added permanently. So with that in mind, try to imagine where he was coming from in some of his most famous quotes. If a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps it is because he hears a different drummer. Let him step to the music which he hears, however measured or far away. Another of Thoreau's great quotes. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life, and to see if I could not learn what it had to teach, and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. And Thoreau finally said, in wildness is the preservation of the world. Thoreau's work is still relevant today because it speaks to our deepest human needs. We all long for a simpler life, a closer connection to nature, a deeper understanding of ourselves. Thoreau's work can help us to achieve all of these things, and so will I, said I, the prophet. Another of the mountain's eternal students is Gustav Mahler. The renowned Austrian composer Gustav Mahler often sought refuge in the Austrian Alps. His compositions, such as his Symphony No. 3 and Symphony No. 4, are believed to have been influenced by the majestic landscapes and profound solitude he found in the mountains. 